So maybe you've heard of this before. Anything raised to the zero power is one. Um, this is, the, this is uh, what happens when we have a zero exponent. So anything raised to the zero power is just one. So that sounds pretty wild, but it's true. Um, so let's examine an example. We'll look at an example. Uh, so if I had, let's go back to our fives, but you could use any number. If I had five to the fourth power and I was dividing by five to the fourth power, well, I've got, if I rewrite this as repeated multiplication, I've got four fives. So all the fives cancel out. And what does that just leave me with? Just leaves me with one. You could have seen that it was the same number divided by the same number, and that's the same as one. Could have skipped a little step there. Um, or, again, going back to this quotient rule, uh, if we look at the quotient rule, well, the quotient rule, it says I take... 5 and take 4 minus 4, but 4 minus 4 is 0. So 5 to the 0 power, again, using that property of equality, right, if I've got a whole string of things equal to each other, the things on the end have to be equal to each other for that to be true. So 5 to the 0 ends up being 1. And we could put any number in here. It doesn't have to be 5, and we could put any exponent in here and it would still work out the same. When we subtract them, a number subtracted from itself leaves you with zero. And then when we write them out, right, anything divided by itself is also one. So it works for any number. So any number to the zero power is just one. So if I gave you a crazy, product, raised to the zero power, so anything raised to the zero power, you could just immediately say, oh, that is just one. Because anything raised to the zero power, no matter what it is, is always one. So that is uh, what happens when we have a zero exponent. Uh, so let's do a couple of examples uh, to show you how we can actually use all of these all of these rules together. So just a couple of quick examples. I'll show you how we use all the rules together. All right. So let's try it out. So first example we'll look at is we've got 2 to the negative 9, 2 to the 5th, all over 2 to the 4th. Okay. All right, so we're going to use a couple of the rules together here. Um, so I see I've got all 2s, so that's good. That means I can use my rules. Uh, so the first thing I see, I've got 2 to the negative 9 times 2 to the 5th. Well, I've got the same number raised to different powers, so we're going to use the product rule on that. So negative 9 plus 5 makes negative 4. And I still have my 2 to the 4th hanging out down there. Um, and then <coughs> we can use our quotient rule because I've got the same base, di diff well, same bases raised to a power and they're being divided. So that means the quotient rule says I take 2 to the negative 4 minus 4. Well, all right. So 2 to the negative 4 minus 4 makes 2 to the negative 8. And then our quotient rule, or excuse me, our negative exponents, right? How do we deal with that? We don't like that negative there, so we make it cross the line. It becomes 2 to the positive 8. And you can multiply the 2's out. Um, so the answer is 1 over 2 to the 8. You could do this a, a different way. Um, sometimes some people don't like to deal with the ne negative exponents. So they'll deal with them in the very first step of the problem. So let's see how that would go. So if I wanted to get rid of this negative exponent, very first step, because the negatives are just scary. Uh, so I would take this 2 to the negative 9th and put it into the bottom of my fraction. So I'd end up with 2 to the 5th all over 
2 to the positive 9, right, because it crossed the fraction bar and went into the bottom, times 2 to the 4th. So now I can use my quotient, or excuse me, my product rule, same base, different powers being multiplied together, 9 plus 4 makes 13. Now I can use the quotient rule, same base, raised to a power, so this becomes 2 to the 5th minus 13, which is 2 to the negative 8, which again, we use what we know about negative exponents to make it a positive exponent to finish out the problem. So that's one example, two different ways you could do it. Um, I'm sure there are probably other ways you might approach it, but um, that, those are two different ways you might approach it. If you don't love negative numbers, um, you might make your exponents positive first, but if you don't mind them, you can just work straight through it and um, you just apply the rules with that negative number right in the mix. So that's one example. Um, a second example, using these exponent rules together, let's see what we have. So if I've got, another example, if I've got x to the 7th all over y to the 3rd, and then raise that to the negative 5 power. So again, we're going to use a, all these rules combined together. So I see I've got a quotient raised to a power. Um, I see these parentheses and I'm thinking I need, probably need to get rid of those. Um, and so one of our our product rule for fractions told us if I had a fraction raised to a power, I take the top and raise it to a power, and then take the bottom and raise it to that power. So I have x to the 7th to the negative 5 over y to the 3rd to the negative 5. Okay. Okay, now, can you see what rule we can use next? Um, next, we can use the uh, power rule, where a power is raised to a power, right? We've got a, a number raised to a power, raised to a power, and another num down here, same, same scenario, a number raised to a power, raised to a power. And so our power rule tells us we multiply the exponents. So this becomes x to the negative 35. And on the bottom we have y to the negative 15. 3 times 5 gives me negative 15. 7 times negative 5 gives me negative 35. Um, all right, we're almost done. The only problem we have left is we've got these negative exponents. But remember, if we, what negative exponents tell us to do, if it's negative in the bottom and we take it to the top, it becomes positive. So take the y's to the top, and that becomes po to the positive 15 power. And then the x's we're going to take into the bottom, and it becomes the positive 35 power. So that's another example of how you might use these exponent rules together to simplify an algebraic expression. I've got one more for you. It's a little tricky. So let's see what we can do. All right. So We've got 2 to the negative 2 plus 2 to the negative 3. Okay, really like these in your textbook. Um, you've got a whole bunch of them in your homework. Um, so, <coughs> what's different about, do you notice anything different about this problem than the problems that we've been doing? So, this problem has a plus sign. And remember I said, oh, when I showed you why these uh, rules work, they work because of the properties of multiplication, because we're dealing with multiplication. But now we don't have multiplication in there, we have addition. So it kind of messes everything up for us. But we can still deal with it. Uh, so I can't really use any of these rules on this, but I can deal with the negative exponents. So the negative 2... Um, I want that to become positive, so again, I just drop that into the bottom of my fraction, and it makes my exponent positive. And I can play the same game with the 2 to the negative 3. It becomes 2 to the positive 3. Well, I know 2 squared is 1 fourth, and 2 to the third is 8. 
So I get one fourth plus one eighth. Hey, that's a problem I can do, right? Need a common denominator, right? Common denominator here is eight. So this becomes two over eight plus one over eight, which gives you common denominators eight. Add the numerators, three eighths. And that's our answer. So while we couldn't use any of these other fancy rules that we learned about on this one, we could deal with the negative exponents and then work through the problem that we got um, after we dealt with the negative exponents. So that is all about exponent rules. Um, so good luck. Try your homework out. See how it goes. Uh, I hope it goes well.